hello. <laughs> um, I have no idea how this works, but um, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome uh, to this sweet, sweet Facebook Live event um, in which I talk to you and answer your questions about the Illustration Academy. Um, I have no idea how this works, so let's go. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> Um, I'm awaiting questions, so if anything, this is an open Q&A forum, so if anybody has any questions, please feel free to post them up over to, on the side. Um, this is very distracting, I see all the little icons. And <laughs> um, so, so very, very quickly, um, some information about the Illustration Academy workshop that we've got going on. Uh, it's going to be five weeks altogether. I'm going to be there from July 9th to July 15th. Um, they got an amazing lineup of artists, uh, all kinds of people. Uh, Vanessa Del Rey, Wesley, Wesley Bird, John Foster, all these people. Uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, so like, we're there at least, you know, every instructor has like about a week. I'm going to be there on, again, week five, and we're going to be doing assignments. We're going to be doing um, life drawing and just hanging out. And, um, yeah, can you guys hear me, by the way? I can assume concerning your comments. <laughs> Screw you, Sean. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh Lots of lots of cool shit. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I should curse or not, but I guess like whatever. Um, oh shit! What up, everybody? Oh sweet. Um, yeah. No, no. I I look like the Pokemon missing. No, right now. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know what this is. <laughs> they, well, so so pretty much this whole thing is like promoting the Illustration Academy uh workshop that's going on this summer. Um. And then your camera sucks. Does it suck or is it you? Like, it could be you. You suck. <laughs> uh, it's pretty, you know what? You guys are, the sh are horrible. Okay. <laughs> okay. How do you continue to advance your knowledge and abilities in relation to your work? See, let's get to some real Q&A. What up? Let's do this. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, so how do you continue to advance the knowledge and abilities in relation to my work? I guess, you know, after a while, things get really boring. <laughs> so you kind of have to, um, you kind of have to just, like, I don't know, find a fascination on everything. Like, I think, like, one of the reasons why painting is so fascinating to me is because, like, you really can't have, like, mastery over it entirely like there's still moments in which you'll you know walk down the street and see something beautiful and you're like how why is this visually happening um that fascination is what originally drives me to painting so it's literally impossible to just like you know be all like i'm the master of everything i know it all no 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 there's so much to learn about painting there's so much to do there's so much to think about um and, and not just that but i think like life always influences you in a way that you don't realize um someone once said to me like someone once said to me the following like a rich life lives, leads to a rich imagination so like that's why i always kind of hesitate when people are just like oh i just paint and draw all day long and like I don't ever leave the house and I'm just like, oh that's that's nice and all, but like you're gonna get really burnt out really quickly. And there's so much about like going out and seeing, you know, something new, going out and having great experiences with people that really like informs and enhances your art. Um, so yeah. All right, hi everybody. I don't know if that answered your question, but I hope so. Uh, <laughs> um, so really quickly, are people still are they seeing me okay? I I don't know. I have shitty internet. It's like <laughs> this is super weird. <laughs> um, 
Uh, so really quick, so anything else? And I'm again, this is an open forum. It's a Q and A. So any questions you guys have, please feel free to ask. Um, it pixelates any time you move. Man, I wonder how much that's me or you. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, great. As long as like you guys can hear me fine, that's good. I'll try to stay very still. But that's hard. That shit is hard. That is shit is super hard. When we do a collab, now that you're doing stunts, I need a model. Yes, I always need models. Dude, hell's yeah. Come come do handstands paintings. That would be awesome. Do you have any mentors or artists you look up to or find inspiration from? Who are they? Um, oh, damn. There's too many amazing artists out there, to be honest with you. Um, so you have... Uh, uh, well, I have a fascination for all the dead artists, uh, <laughs> like Sargent and, um, you know, Undersword, Alma Tadima, Jean Jerome Leon, I always fuck up his name. Um, just everybody that, like, is dead, I always really have a strong love for. I also find dead artists not so intimidating. Uh, <laughs> because, like, the, the ones that are alive are like, oh, you know, and, and they're there, and I can usually meet them, and it's just like, oh, no, like, you know, here's, like, this dead artist. I'm not worried about it. Like, I'm, I mean, they're not competing. <laughs> um, no, 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 but I do have a lot of, like, really amazing um, artists that I do look up to right now currently. I absolutely love Ian Keg, Wesley Burt. Um, Kim Jung Yi, uh, oh gosh, uh, fucking Christian Allison, Crash McCreary, just pretty much a bunch of people that I've worked with. Ryan Minderding, who's like the head of Marvel, um, Andy Park, um, yeah, just like all these incredible artists that, like, you know, I've had the fortune to meet or work with. Like, when you see them work, you're just like, wow this is amazing um oh my god craig mullins of course um I, again i'm trying really hard not to move and be pixelated for you guys but this is very difficult and hi everybody this is super difficult um i but i also try to kind of give myself time um away from artists you know looking at too many artists um uh, when I'm painting, because like I feel like they'll inform my work a little bit too much, even the dead ones. Um, there is a moment uh, that it's just one of those things where it's just like, you know, once I start painting, I stay away from new work. I, I don't want to be influenced. I feel like if you're a student, it's good to have strong influences because that will kind of guide you towards where you need to go as a professional artist and just be like, okay, this is the standard of what is, you know, what is technically acceptable and what is technically proficient in order to gain work. Um, I, I see a lot of lovely comments. You guys are the sweetest, except you, Ben Gross. You're the worst. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, no, it's one of those things where it's just like, sorry, it's it's very, it's very, um, I'm, I'm very like, just like, you know, my, my, my idea, my thoughts and ideas are completely broken as soon as I see a new little like, like icon or like comment. I'm like, oh, I'm like that, you know, dog from Up where he's just like, squirrel, huh. Oh. <laughs> But yeah, no, does that answer your question? I, I have a lot of influences, but usually when I'm painting, I try to put them away. Um, I try to like not listen to them too much because they do. They they will influence you. And 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 it's true, Miguel, you're not the worst <laughs> for now. <laughs> Let's see how this goes. Um yeah, any any other I saw a question earlier about what do I use? I'm scared of like scrolling up. Um, just because it's one of those things that, like, I might mess this whole thing up. Um, I think they were asking what kind of iPad. Do you mind asking the question again? Just because I'm, I'm scared of scrolling up and, like, making this, like, crash. <laughs> I realize that if I want to stream, I'm going to need to get probably better internet. This, this, this might suck a bit. <laughs> um, so let me, let me. Let me see if I can scroll, because they're not asking it again. Ask me again. Do it. Uh, oh, let's see. 
Okay, never mind. So, oh, here we go. Uh, did you use an iPad Pro for professional work? No, I don't have one. I want one. Apple, send me one. <laughs> and hi, good to see you guys. I know, I need to go back to New York. New York is fantastic. Oh, hi, Andrea. Oh, you guys are awesome. Yeah, no, 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 I don't use an iPad Pro. Um, I don't have one. I should, but I don't. Um, I've seen amazing things uh, happen from it, but I really don't. All right. Ooh, one from one from the J Herb. Uh, what role do you believe art plays in our current times, and how is it evolving with culture and technology? That damn, that's a good question. What the hell? Oh, hi everybody. Um, I don't think that art ever played less of a role than it did. Um, definitely back in medieval times, like artists were considered like rock stars just because, you know, we didn't have television or press or print or anything. So, so much of our visual medium came from like these artists, which is why like, you know, people like, you know, Leonardo da Vinci and like, you know, Raphael and like, you know, all these like medieval artists back then were considered rock stars, even up until, you know, Know, early 1920s like artists were a really big deal um, so it's one of those things where it's just like for example Norman Rockwell was a rock star of his times so it was like so many others in fact little known things and historically in the Olympics there was an artist category um, and some of the first judges of Miss Universe were all artists um, so it's one of those things where it's just like I, you know, there was a very strong, obvious role because of, you know, the lack of technology that we had in order to represent visual mediums. As photography became more and more well used, as printing methodologies became better, I also think as film and television became a medium, the painting visual side of things, you know, lost that kind of rock star kind of impact. But it still played a role. Every, if you think about it, every object that you have, every object that you touch, from an iPad to like everything in a movie that you see, was designed at some point by someone. So, like, pretty much like an artist designed an iPad, an artist designed Yoda. So everything that you consume was designed at some point by an artist. I think most people tend to forget that because they're so far removed from where it comes from. But I think it's one of those things where it's like now, you know, with social media, with the ability to like reach a wider audience, it's becoming an artist is much, much more easier than ever before and, and t telling people, hey, this is what I contributed to this project or this is my work and my work alone becomes like way easier now. And I think it, it kind of is bringing back that kind of like not rock star, but importance of the artist behind um, the projects and the things that we see. Um, I, as technology, it, and how it will evolve with technology, well, I mean, there are so many reports of like how automation is going to destroy so many jobs. But one of the few ones that are safe are pretty much anything that has to do with like one-to-one -one contact with another human being or anything that is of any creative nature. And I feel like um, creative thinking will probably be one of the most valuable assets in our future. So I hope that answers your questions. So I kind of went on a tangent. All right, next question. What is your take on the artist as a persona separate from the person behind the work and their own personal identity? This is the more non-commercial question. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Uh, what is your take on the artist as a persona separate from the person behind the work on the, I'm so confused by that question, Zapata, like, like, it's like, yo, dog, I heard you ha liked artist persona separate from the person behind the work artist, like, what was that? can you, can you rephrase this question, can you make it simpler for me? <laughs> it's very confusing. <laughs> um, take on the artist as a persona separate from a person. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So like the, the persona that like people think um, an artist creates um, or like the persona that people think that you are in separation from um, 
you know, the who you actually are? Is that the question? And Hell's, yeah, Persona 5. Oh, I'm so obsessed with that game, you guys. I literally, like, I played it, like, for 20 minutes this morning just because I knew I wouldn't be able to play it again for the rest of the day. So it's like, I'm like this right now. Pixelated. <laughs> okay. So there's, I'm, I'm going to talk about the idea of, like, what I what I sometimes like encounter with people where it's like um, once you get to a certain level of um, once you get to a certain level of recognition within the art world people start to kind of know you and and some people have an idea of who you are um, that may or may not reflect reality um, but in some ways at least for me how I like to see it is I do have a sense of responsibility to students um, or to younger artists. Um, I give a little bit of myself in that aspect because like when I was a student, I, I was lost. I had a lot of questions that weren't necessarily answered by people or, you know, I, 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 I don't know. It was just one of those things where it's like most people just didn't, didn't want to bother or it's not that they didn't want to bother, but like, you know, I was a little punk with a ton of questions and there was some key moments in my life that the right individual stepped in and were like, yes, I will sit down and answer this for you. And that was so impactful to me because it was one of the reasons why I left, you know, college and jumped into an atelier. It was one of the reasons why I found out, oh, hey, a college degree doesn't really matter that much. And what really matters is your portfolio. It's one of those things where it's just like it, it pushed me in the right direction, you know, having someone to help me out in some way. And most of the people I've encountered just need someone to just tell them that it's going to be okay. And that they shouldn't freak out so much about their art, they should just focus about their technique. And that there's always good work for people who have excellent technique. Um, so I do try to give people time. Now I always try to be honest with them and tell them, hey, you know, like this idea of superhero artists that you have, like, that's great and all, but I'm still, I'm still a human being. You know, I will have my off days. I will have my shit days. I will have my great days. I will have days where I'm so tired I can't possibly, like, you know, just completely answer your questions. Or I will have my days where I sit down with you and really talk to you about your portfolio. Or sit down with you and you will tell me about your problems and I'll try and help you out. I feel it's one of those things where it's like it, it is a responsibility that we do have. Um, and and you can stay away from that um, as long as you're honest with people. You know, if, if you like to paint just for painting sakes and want to stay away from that kind of interactions with others, I think you're entitled to that. You know, like, um, I also think that people shouldn't, like, like, people shouldn't demand much more than what you're ready to give. Um, but at least that's my philosophy in it. I, I think that so much of what we're able to do is powered by the people that love what we do. Um, and, and, you know, so many of the workshops and so many of the conventions and so many of those things is empowered by people who are passionate about it. And at least me personally, I wish to be welcoming to that. Um, I hope that was your question. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, um, I see so many new people and friends. Hi, everybody. Um, okay, so what do you focus on consuming for inspiration in concept and idea and generation? Persona 5. I love that game so much. Um, no, actually, video games, anime, uh, movies, traveling, things that when I, I'm really busy, I'm always like, oh, I shouldn't do this and I shouldn't like work so hard on this or I shouldn't play this game but then I'm like exhausted from like working non-stop and it's one of those things where it's just like no you need time to step away from it and do the things that you enjoy I actually really love cooking I love to be able to play video games and be inspired by the narratives of like you know video games Persona 5 or um, um, you know uh, animes and things like that. I think like that's important. It's important to step away sometimes and give yourself time to enjoy other things. I found myself way more, um, way more interested in like painting and and able to tell my, you know, you know, be able to do my craft a little bit easier that way. Okay, let's see more questions. Did you eat a magnificent gelat? No, no, 
Yes, I don't remember. Gelato was really good in Florence. That's the question. Other question, can you tell me how you got your job working on the Godfather of Five Families? Um, oh, there's another awesome question above. Who's your favorite Marvel character? Oh, shit, that's hard. I'm going to say Doctor Strange because what up? <laughs> um, that, that's simple. <laughs> um, um, uh, Godfather of Five Families, I've just started working at Kabam and that was the sweet sweet project that we had a chance on to do. It was a mobile game but it was really fun because like all the all the um, assets were painted. That was awesome and they were the final assets so it was really cool. Okay let me see more questions. What was your experience at the Illustration Academy as a student and what made you want to come back to teach? Um, actually to me I I wasn't ever a, a student at the Illustration Academy, so I have heard amazing things about it. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I decided to teach. Um, it's, it's, I really love those kinds of like small curate, you know, like workshops, you know, or long term, like, you know, dedicated workshops where you get like lots of industry professionals to teach. I personally, like when I was a student, I, goddamn, like I, I just, it was so beneficial to me. Um, actually, one of the reasons I am where I am today is because I have gone to workshops. Um, so yeah, I, I think that's going to be I think that's going to be a really really fun um, workshop. Plus, I get a week with students, and that's something I don't often get. I get usually I think the maximum I've done a workshop is for like three days, and in this in that workshop we had like amazing results. It's like oh my god, everybody. Um, so I'm I'm very excited to do a whole week's worth of work workshop that's gonna be fun all right more questions ah oh, you guys are the sweetest um, what direction do you see your personal work heading in the near future outside of concept work oh Travis hi <laughs> um, I am excited because I get to work on oils a lot more I'm I have a big show coming up in this September um, in Paris with Ian McKegg. Um, and um, it's all about just legends and, and love and things that are inspiring to me. So I think I'm, I'm going to start moving more onto, um, you know, the oil painting side of things. And I've discovered a lot of really exciting things technically, like the importance of like, you know, like for example, and I'm a little like scatterminded about this because I'm so excited about the you know oil painting aspect of things now. Um, in Sargent's notes, he it describes this process as using early on like very like diluted uh, pigments with actually just turpentine, and I tried it out, and that creates like a very soft, um, an easy, uh, blendable. Um, you know, pigment that is just fun. And then once you get to like a certain range where like, oh, okay, now like I kind of get it and where I'm going, that's when he starts applying pigments almost completely without any kind of varnish. And I tried that out in some of my older um, pieces that I did, you know, recent, well, not that old, but pretty recently. And like it, it's, it's like it makes it so manageable and it feels like how I paint digitally, like where I'm able to just kind of mix pigments into pigments and blend edges together. And that to me, I'm really excited about. Um, in terms of theme for future works, I'm just going to keep doing things that I think are cool. I'm going to do things that I think are challenging. Um, my, in my concept work, like I am challenged and I am like, push to you know exciting things um, just because of the nature of concept art you're constantly working on a lot of different things all at once but with you know you still need to get a certain level of results so it's not necessarily the place to go experiment with my own personal um, with my own personal work that's a place I get to go and experiment and that's a place I get to go and be like, oh, I'm going to like spend a week and, and learn how to paint waves or I'm going to go, you know, spend a whole month and paint this one thing. If I want to, I'm able to do that. So, yeah, I hope that answers your questions. Anyway, I see a lot of new people. What's up? <laughs> Carmen, yes, you can have a one on one workshop with me. Uh, <laughs> what is a common mistake that you see young artists commonly making during their rise and what would you like to see them focus on more in general? Um, 
there's a couple notions that I think um, younger artists um, have, like, that, that every time I see them, I'm like, oh, like, younger artists are just, like, so, for some reason, they ha people have this thought that, like, oh, I should never use reference. Like, they see Kim Jong-Yi, and they think, oh, if I just, you know, if I just do everything from imagination, I'll be really cool. And it's like, no, like, reference. And reference doesn't necessarily mean, like, just a picture. Reference could literally be painting from life. It means study. That's what it is. It's something, it's whatever you need to use in order to, you know, make your brushstroke more informed. And I see so many young artists, like, just be like, I did this from memory. And you're just like, yeah, it shows. You didn't think about the lighting. You didn't observe the textures. You didn't observe the materials. You didn't think about any of that. And it shows. And I wish, I wish, had you sat down and thought about these things, this painting would be ten times better. And I think also another one is just, like, students, younger students painting without intent. Um, the ability to sit down and just be like, okay, I'm going to really focus on making this a good painting. I'm going to start thinking about why, what, what is every brushstroke that I'm doing, doing. I think like if you paint traditionally, you have to think about that just because like if you don't think about your brushstroke, the whole painting is screwed. But with digital, it's one of those things where so you can just like, you know, noodle forever because it's digital. There's undo. So we don't train ourselves to really think about the brush strokes. And I think that hurts a lot of students. Um, so the use of reference, you know, whether it's like painting from life, whether it's a picture, like use it, be informed. I always love it too when um, I, I made a mistake. I went on a 4chan. Um, I just looked at 4chan and my name. And, like, I saw this one dude, this one troll, like, discussing my workshop. And it's like, I should just copy his painting, you know, from her reference. And I just really, like, grab that guy and first, like, I don't know, punch him in the face. But then afterwards, just be like, listen, do you know that Alfonso Muka painted from reference? Do you know that fucking Ander Sorns had pictures and he used them for some of his paintings? That for, like... And even before then, like, traditionally, people, you know, would pay, you know, people on the street to, stand, you know, stand still. And they would do a lot of sketches, and that was their reference. So we've been using reference for pretty much our entire history. And it's just a method of, yeah, a method of, like, information. Yeah, Norman Rockwell. Norman Rockwell traced sometimes. And he even had, like, elaborate photo shoots. Um, and it's just, like... The true measure of an artist isn't whether they use, like, you know, reference or not. It's what they do with that ref, with that information. Are they able to, like, accurately, like, show you something convincing that feels right? And if they're able to do that, then awesome. And if not, you just need to go outside and paint more and see what reality does. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, that's what I would tell. I would tell younger artists, like, dude, like, sit down, study use references, paint from life, that's super important. Oh yeah, and master studies. I'm, I'm a broken record to master studies. Um, <laughs> I know, I shouldn't have looked at 4chan, but I did find some super funny comments about me that it was just like, whoa. <laughs> they, are, they are a fun, hateful bunch. Um, okay, let me see. I want to, I want to, I want to catch up with some of your comments. This our crowd is it's getting bigger. What up, guys? Um, okay. Oh, thank you so much for the Doctor Strange comment. Um, yeah, people saying nightmares. Hi, Leisha. <laughs> um, what is the worst advice I've ever gotten? Ooh, worst advice I've ever gotten. Um. Oh, yeah, there was this one dude that told me that I should lessen my quality so that the rest of the concept artists in the team don't feel so bad or that I don't have to give work to other people. Yeah, I know. That was like, whoa. <laughs> I was painting and I was really into it and I was like working within the engine constraints 
Um, and he's like, no, no, you're spending too much time on this. And I spent like a day and a half. You should lessen your quality. I left that company shortly after. <laughs> um, oh, everybody, so many friends in here. What up? Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, thanks, guys. I'm seeing a lot of love. Um, can we expect more magic work in the future? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, I took a long break from Magic the Gathering just because I had a lot of um, I had a lot of just other works and other projects, so it, it it got it got tricky to manage everything. Oh, thank you, thank you. I I love giving workshops, you guys. It's super fun. It's like stage, and I get to paint, and we get to talk about art, <laughs> which is why again, like I'm sorry to plug it so much, but like. I don't know, like, I love giving workshops, and, like, you know, like, Schoolism is great, the Illustration Academy is great, like, so many amazing people get together and want to give, like, really good education, and, you know, and it's one of those things where it's just, like, from my own personal history, where I'm still paying off student loans from a college, I kind of, like, eh, um, I learned so much just from workshops and conventions and, and things like that, that it's just, like, it's really fun. Um, and I, I don't know, I recommend it to everybody. I, I learned a lot. Um, more fine art paintings slash drawings coming soon? Yes. Uh, again, I have a show coming up, a gallery show coming up in uh, September. So I think within the next couple months, I'm going to have a lot of new stuff to show and not a lot of sleep. I'll still somehow try and find time for my video games. Uh, hoping for a Lisbon workshop. You should talk to Andre and check out um, THU. Oh, someone asked me earlier if I was going. You should ask Andre. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what else? Any more questions? I, I, I might have missed a couple because, like, the chat just went crazy really quick. Um, let me see. Any more questions? And if not, I'm just going to start talking about life, about my cat. I don't know if you guys can see her. She's back there taking a nap. She's so fucking adorable. Um, where you be at Berlin? No. <laughs> For the TH meetup? No, no. Um, this uh, year, my travel is... No, no, not in May. No, no. No, <laughs> I, I, I need to sit down and I need to work really hard on that show for September, unfortunately. Oh, you want to tell me about my cat? Um, when are I going to get a new camera? I already have a new camera. Um, but, okay, hold on. Give me a second. Come here. Ugh. All right, guys, this is my girl. Um, this is Beatty. She loves to show her butthole everywhere. She looks really uncomfortable right now. I don't know. Maybe. But this girl has been with me forever, and she sleeps with me, and she's just the best. Please don't scratch me. You look like you're about to hate on me. But, like, <laughs> I love this girl. I do. I'm going to put her down now. She hates being picked up. Um... But yeah, she's just adorable. She sleeps on my belly. Um, every time I sit down, um, she like just cuddles up in my belly. She is ridiculous. She's the cutest little thing. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, you guys are so wonderful. Let's see. Where do you see your career headed in the near future as an illustrator slash concept artist? Well, as a concept artist, my career is very exciting. I'm currently working right now at Universal Entertainment. Um and it's just uh and it's just been really, really wonderful. I'm working with um specifically with Crash McCreary, who is just one of the nicest guys in the in the earth. Is he's just super awesome to work with. Um I can't I don't know if I can talk more about what I'm working on, especially as it's a public forum. But whenever I'm able to release stuff, I'll be all over it. I'm I'm just excited to have the opportunity, and I think it's going to be really fun. Um, in terms of illustrator, um, I haven't done much illustrations lately. I think it's because I've been focusing a lot more on my fine art. Um, but I do approach my fine art and my concept art in a very illustrative way. So it's almost like a, 
you know, like I'm not on book covers right now, but my concept art is very um, illustratory-ish, and my fine art is very like close and dear to my heart in a very illustrative kind of way. So concept art is where I get to, you know, really push for stories, but my own fine art is where I get to, you know, explore and really like push my skill to where I want to go. Um, yeah, I know, I know. I, I, you know, I hate talking about my, my cat's butt and like <laughs> in public, but I think that's like, if you own a cat, like they'll always turn around and just like, it's just the thing that they show you. I can draw that little star from memory. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Have you ever considered doing an art book of your work? Yes. In the future, it's definitely in the works. I'm just, I'm just. I'm overwhelmed by all the stuff that I have to do. Like, I, um, for those of you that have tried to get a hold of me via email and realize that sometimes I don't answer, I'm just painting. <laughs> and it's just one of those things where it's like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm suddenly a week past and what the hell? Um, so it's, it's definitely going to happen at some point. Um, I just need to, I, I have been, um, taking better high-res pictures of the work that I do, my fine art work specifically, just because I realized, um, you know, when we were in talks of making like a little art book or something like that, I, I gathered all my pieces together. And it's one of those things where it's just like, oh no, these are not high-res enough. So yeah, little, little by little, but eventually, just chill, <laughs> eventually. All right, Adrian, so, um, between the professional work and personal work, have you experienced a period of burnout or feeling too drained creatively? creatively? And what did you do to get through that? Yes, totally. Um, actually, last December, uh, I had a show in um, May. No, 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 not, not May, sorry, uh, March, early March. And I had taken time off between December, January, and February. And I didn't do anything. Oh, I didn't do anything at all because I was so exhausted from the year before and it was just one of those things where it's just like oh my gosh like you do need time off sometimes um, and I feel like there's this I don't know like I, I wonder if this is like a part of like our American culture where if you're not cost or maybe capitalist culture where if you're not constantly producing then there's something wrong with you um, so I gave myself the, you know, the time off. I took like maybe two months, two months or three months where like I painted something occasionally, but I would just like chill out. Um, and it was very refreshing because I've never given myself the opportunity to do that before. I've always been very, um, just working nonstop all the time. And I realized that I had reached a point of exhaustion and no amount of love can, you know, prepare you for just like doing this all the time. And sometimes you do need a break. We're not machines. Um, so that, you know, that time off was actually very kind of eye opening. I'm, I'm hoping to work really hard this year so that like maybe next year I can do the same, maybe even longer, take like six months off and paint when I feel like it and take, take a break. I feel like, you know, we start out working, 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 and that's good because you have to really just, you know, you have to give it your best in the beginning. But then there comes a point where you're just like, okay, I want to do this for a long term, you know, I want to do this for the rest of my life. I don't want to be burned out. And then also another thing that's really important too is that even when I'm working um, professionally, I do make time to paint my own things. I think that's really important. Um, if you don't make time to do your own thing, like it just it gets it gets exhausting because you're constantly creating work, even if it's great work, but you're constantly creating work for other people. And and that is just that can drain you creatively because sometimes you won't agree with their decisions. Sometimes the things that you make um, don't even end up being the finals. So it's one of those things where it's like, it's important. It's important to step back and also create your own work. Uh, but more so than anything, I would just like advocate for like balance. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like, yeah, sit down, do your own work. Don't just be like obsessed with like, I gotta do my own work, otherwise I'm gonna go crazy. Yeah, you know, like no, like, like do your own work when you can like chill out. Um, when you have time, if you feel like you need a break, take a break. Um, yeah, I hope that answered your question. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people here. Hi. <laughs> okay, have you used or do you use the iPad Pro as an alternative to artwork doing travel? Someone asked this question earlier. I do not have an iPad Pro. I want one. <laughs> but I'm, I'm also cheap. <laughs> and I might need to buy a new um, Cintiq just because the one that I have right now is just old and not looking good. But yeah, I'm, I'm super cheap. But they're great. I've tried them. They're really fun. Um, speaking of time off, what are you playing nowadays, video game-wise? Oh my god, Persona 5. I love that game so much. I'm so obsessed with that game. It's all I talk about. It's all I play. My poor boyfriend comes home. He's like, hey, what up? And I'm just like, hey, I love you, Persona. Uh, <laughs> I love it. It's so fun. I, I, I just, I love it. it. It's really inspiring to me, too. Um, okay. Let's see. More and more. Uh, ba -ba. Oh, what obstacles have you come across, if any, when it comes to having a lot of eyes on you as a content creator? Was there a point where it has felt overwhelming or strained? Mm. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think like it's something I think about too too often. I like to. I don't know. It's it's interesting because I do believe that as content creators, um, especially painters, we are always in a conversation with other people. We um, it's like a th almost like a three way conversation, right? It's like painter to canvas, canvas to audience, and then audience to painter. And in some ways, what I'm painting, I I want people to have a relax reaction. I want people to feel something. Because I feel something when I, you know, when I paint it, and and in some ways it's almost like it's just sorry about that. Um, apparently, I had bad connection issues because I don't know Comcast sucks. <laughs> um, but anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, it cut off. It cut off. Um, anyway, going back to it. So yeah, this is three-way conversation. Again, painter to canvas, canvas to audience, audience to painter. And it's something that I always think about. Um, and it's important to listen. You got to hit buttons. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but anyway, going back to the question, it's important to you know, listen to people because in some ways that's like I'm excited about, you know, what people think about my work. But at the same time, I don't let it overwhelm me enough to the point where it would have a say in what I do and what I make. Um, balance, you know, like I don't want to paint things. I, I'm not, I like to paint things that will make people feel things, but I'm not, you know, controlled by it or owned by it. I don't think that would be healthy. Um, I also know that like there's a difference between um, online social media and you know you know what 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 reality is. So there you know I might have a large online following, but it's one of those things where it's like you know I don't walk around and be like look at all the followers. No, it's just like I you know I still do like one-on-one -on -one interactions with people at the gallery shows, and those are, those really influence me. You know, sitting, you know, people sitting up and actually looking at my work face to face, like, and being able to talk about it. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but I guess it's one of those things where it's like I try not to be overwhelmed by it because I, I guess I just don't think about it. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm gonna answer other questions now. Um, okay, a real one. At what point do you feel like you found a direction for your personal work? Like, really figure out what makes you happy and feel fulfilled. Um, there was a period of time that I was doing, um, originally I started doing fine art as a way to kind of do things for myself.
but the shows became so frequent that I was making them as quick as I was making uh, concept art. And part of me, it just, it, it, it didn't feel right. Like I didn't, I wasn't able to really give it my best. And I'm, there's still pieces I'm proud of, you know, but in context, right? Like I'm proud that I did them because I did them in like six hours, but it didn't really give me the emotion and the feeling and the satisfaction that I wanted. So there was a point where I was just like, you know what, screw this. I'm going to do what I want to do. Um, and if it's late, it's late. If it misses it, it misses it. Um, it was not the best for the gallery owner. <laughs> But I give them really, you know, I give them my best work, um, or at least work that I'm proud of, that I generally was like, oh, I learned a lot from this. Um, there's a painting I did of my current boyfriend, um, or a drawing where he's like looking in his hands like this, and he's like really depressed. And I, and I think that was one of those moments when I was working, and I was like, yeah, this feels right. It just, something clicked. It was like beautiful, and... And I felt really inspired and I felt like I was pushing my skill. And and for me, it, it just felt like something that I wanted to draw and and, and 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 everything just felt right. And I think ever since then I realized that I just cannot rush certain stuff in my own personal work. Like I really just need to, you know, give it the time it deserves, at least, you know, if I'm able to. Um, all right, other questions. Um, I find it hard to feel like an illustration is finished. It usually gets to the point where I'm not so much improving it as if I'm changing it. Do you have any tips to help with deciding when a piece is finished? Um, deadlines help for me. <laughs> deadlines help uh, quite a lot um, because I'm the same. If I if I have like endless amount of time on something, I will spend endless amount of time fixing things little by little um but i usually do have one good rule is like is my focal point finished if my po focal point feels finished then i'm much easier like everything else doesn't need to be as finished or as rendered like i always kind of be like oh okay um yeah i i, I at least at the very least want to make sure that my focal point feels right um but honestly deadlines <laughs> That does it for me. <laughs> All right, let's let's answer a couple more questions because I think we're almost out of time. Yeah, it was only one hour and it was so fast. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, uh, any tips for starting out as an artist? Have your portfolio ready and apply for smaller companies first, or start with freelancing? Um, I would say like if your skill set is you know up to snuff, right? Like if you know that you see other professionals working in the industry and you see that you're as efficient, um, or at least as from starting, you know, starting, you know, um, positions, then yeah, I think uh, having a portfolio ready is important. Um, I got my first Magic the Gathering gig at a bar because I had my iPad ready. <laughs> um, or apply it to smaller companies first. Um, I also applied to smaller companies when I was a younger artist. Um, I worked with a lot of like local game companies. I feel like whatever you can do to you know gain um, experience is helpful to gain a, you know some sort of like feeling to what it's like to actually like create paintings for a living. I think that that will be helpful. Um, but there's really no one true wrote way to do anything um become a professional i have the worst thing uh sorry there's so many different um roads you can take to become a professional so i think it's one of those things where it's like don't worry too much about it. just just put yourself out there and if you're not getting any hit backs and you know sit back and, and look at your work honestly not not hateful or, or not with anger, like, but like, be like, okay, do I think my anatomy could improve? If the answer is yes, then take more life drawing classes, work a little bit more on your anatomy. Do I think my lighting could improve? Yes. Do I think this could improve? But don't do it from a, oh no, 
I can't, this can't, this, I, I can't, it, my anatomy sucks, I know you're going to be an artist, uh, because that's, like, that's, that holds you back so hard, and that's such a waste of time and energy, so, like, yo, like, just to sit down, calm down, and be like, okay, this is a problem that I can fix, I don't know my anatomy so well, so I'm going to study it, and then with either knowledge or practice, you'll get it and then try again. Um, it took me three years to properly, it took me three years to properly start working on Magic the Gathering because I would apply every year and I'd get a no and I'd get like, or no response at all. So it takes time. So that's what I would tell beginner artists. Just like take your time and you know, improve your skill constantly. Technique is so very important in this. Like. There is great work out there, but you need to have the techni technical skill to do it. I hope that answered your question. All right, one more. As a professional artist, do you find that your time is constantly booked? Like having your whole year planned out for work and future workshops. Oh, thank you, Fred. I do have a lovely, oh. Yes. Um, yeah, I am. <laughs> I'm currently trying to figure out how to manage my schedule a little bit better. Um, I, so far, um, saying no has helped quite a lot, um, which is something I, it took me a long time to learn. Um, it's one of those things where it's just like, um, it's just one of those things where it's just like, you know, I have a couple workshops that I've said yes to this year, a couple events. Um, I see John, John English. Hi, John English. And yeah, and Spectrum Art, we're going to be there. It's going to be fun. Um, and, and just like gatherings that I really enjoy. Um, or things that, you know, or workshops like, you know, the Illustration Academy that I, I feel strongly about and that I want to be a part of. And, and those are, you know, those, those usually I get booked around like mid-fall or at least like a couple quarters beforehand. Um, um, like, for example, for this year, I'm already booked solid. Um, for next year, it's starting to kind of book up to, and then that's just workshops and, um, you know, um, workshops and conventions and things like that. For artwork, I usually just try to keep a minimum of two galleries, you know, two to three gallery shows a year. If I'm, um, the more gallery shows I have, the more group shows still be, because that's lesser. And then for concept art, it just happens. <laughs> And I have to work around all of that. Like, um, again, like I just started working on, on um, Universal and that happened really fast. And it's one of those things where it's like, all right, I can't say no to that because it's really cool. How do I manage everything? Um, and just start saying no to certain projects because I know that I'm going to be spread too thin and that's going to be too much, too much for me. And, and that's important to know your limits too. Um, that was hard for me to figure out, um, cause when I was younger, I would just say yes to everything. Like, yeah, this really cool project. Yes, 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 yes. And before I knew it, I'd be like working all the time and be very, very like exhausted and just like, oh no, this is very painful. <laughs> um, and I was, and in the end I wasn't giving anyone my best. And, and so I realized, you know, I need to take time for myself. I need to take time for my own personal work. I need to take time for my clients. And I need to take time for my family, my friends, and my loved ones. And all of that is important. And also, like, to, you know, work out, too. Um, um, I'm going to go on a little rant here, but um, I kind of fell off the bandwagon a little bit. And I wasn't working out as much. And, like, my hands immediately are starting to hurt again. Um, so working out is really important. It's a way to like strengthen your muscles as a way to keep your tools sharp. My tool is my hands. So like I want to make sure that they're strong. So I, I started, you know, getting back on it again. Um, oh, you guys are so sweet. Thank you, Dan. Um, what is my favorite TV show currently? Oh, we're watching, um, we're watching a lot. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, I have too many. Um, so I'm watching right now with my friends. We, we watch uh, X-Files weekly, and that's really fun because, like, I never – I didn't grow up on X-Files. I thought it was too scary. And um, now I'm watching it. I'm just like, oh, it's awesome. Um, I'm also watching um, 
uh, well, I mean, Game of Thrones is always one of my favorites, too. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. I'm also watching uh, Bakuman, <laughs> which is this super cheesy anime about a manga artist. And, like, it's it's bad. But, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, like the, the main character gets so excited about his drawings, and I'm like, I feel you. <laughs> So yeah, those those two are, uh, those three are fun. Um, all right, I'm gonna take a couple more questions and then we're gonna head on out um, just because I have stuff to do. <laughs> um, any further questions? Last last couple ones. Um, if not, I'll just start babbling again about my cat and about you know works and stuff that I'm doing again with the illustration Academy you guys um, uh, they told me that most of the spots are full by May so please 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 if you are interested in it um, I'm personally teaching week five so sign up um, before that um, don't fly United <laughs> uh, uh, Taking a chance here, would you like to come for a workshop in Israel? Oh, that'd be interesting. Um, if the people that I do the workshop circuit get end up out there, then yeah, probably it'd be really interesting. I've, I've seen um, pictures of Israel. Israel seems really beautiful. Um, what can you say about the process of finding a personal visual language? Can you share with us the experience? I'm especially interested in the moment you find it, but also about the evolutions once you're a professional. Thank you. Okay, um, oh gosh, um, I wasn't so worried about my own visual language. I never was. Um, I think that a lot of people worry too much about what is my style, and I think that's the wrong question, and I think that's the wrong approach to it. I think it's more important to focus on technique. Because I think style just comes naturally for people. Style is how you perceive the world. Style is, you know, your very own unique perspective of, you know, life. And, and, and it's one of those things where it's just like, I think that one shouldn't worry too much about it. Um, I, you know, establish a good technical foundation, you know, and that is whether, and that is applied to everything, whether you want your, you know, to be a little bit more realistic or when you want to be, you know, whether you want your work to be a little bit more stylized or cartoonish, um, all, whatever you want to go, all of that starts with the same foundation. Um, some of the best Pixar artists out you know, that, that paint for these, like, beautiful animated pictures, they go, you know, paint from light. They do plein air all the time. And that's an important practice, and I think more important than worrying about style. Um, and you kind of find your own voice. You, you kind of find what you gravitate towards. I, I think worrying about it too much is one of those things where it's like, I don't know, that, that's, that's too much, too much... Too much anxiety, too much of a waste of time, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like, chill out, just focus on, you know, learning new things, have fun with it. I think little by little, you'll find your own thing. And eventually, too, like, how it, it occurred as a professional, well, it's funny, because like, I just started to focus more on what made me happy. And how to improve my artwork um you know like i know that i like to paint things that feel real i love to paint people i love to tell stories within that and i would do that on my own time and from that i got you know other jobs so, you know i got into match the gathering i got into film but that all happened from doing things that made me happy and challenged me so i think it's one of those things where it's like just just do the things that you've you're passionate about. I think that'll show far more, and I think that'll be more efficient than worrying too much about your style, if that makes sense. Um, do you go out sometimes to clubs and stuff? <laughs> I go to the bar quite often. Uh, <laughs> I see my dad in here, so he'll probably wouldn't like that. <laughs> but whatever, man. <laughs> no, no, I, I um. We sometimes go to shows, music shows. 
Um, I've been kind of aching one for a while. Um, I'm not big into the, like, ums, ums, ums club scene, uh, but I do love me, like, a good bar with some nice cocktails and good conversation. Like, that's the best. <laughs> Um, a little bit late, but could you do a quick breakdown of what subjects the Illustration Academy Illustrative course will cover? Yes, I'm going to very quickly tell you guys. Um, so I'm going to read from a little prompt. So each week students receive and complete an industry-related assignment. So I'll have an assignment ready for you guys that week. Um, and it's pretty much the process required by working illustration. So pretty much it'll be an assignment that's closely related to how I approach, you know, painting, how I approach working on my own illustrations or concept art or paintings, because it's really all connected. Um, each week is different because new instructors provide different perspectives. Um, but we're also going to be working a lot with the students. It's going to be a really communal event. So we're going to be hanging out. We're going to be figure drawing all the time, which I'm super stoked about. Um, and the days are pretty much filled with like lectures, critiques, studio time, figure drawing, and demos. So it's going to be really, really, really fun. Um, we're going to just like paint. We're going to, I'm going to give a couple lecture demos. I'm, we're probably going to have like a nice little assignment um, because it's a week. Oh man, that's going to be fun. I might just do like a nice painting with you guys. And we're going to do life drawing. Oh, again, I'm so excited for life drawing. So yeah, it's going to be really, really, really fun. Again, go, I think in the description of this Facebook live video is a link to the Illustration Academy. So check it out. Um, all right. One more question. I love you guys. You're all the best. Thank you for joining. Like, seriously, it makes me feel good. What's the last concert I went to? Oh, I went to Tobacco. That was fun. It was like, it was like a, like an impromptu thing. Me and my boyfriend was like, I really want to see them tonight. And we were both feeling kind of sick, but we went there, rocked out, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> I don't want that to be my last question. Let, let's end it in like a high note. One more. <laughs> although, although tobacco is pretty cool. That's that was a high note. Check out their music. Super trippy. Oh man, I would love to go to Brazil. That'd be fun. I pretty much just go wherever. It's I like traveling. It's fun. I really need to go to Japan too. Like I'm playing too much Persona. <laughs> And then all the culture, I'm just like, oh, I totally want to do the firework things. Um, <laughs> thank you, everybody. All right. Okay. Well, if there are no more last questions, thank you guys for coming. Uh, once to check again, check out the illustration 